this computer. Yay! It's so fun. Yeah. Now we have begun. Uh, let's see, share this. Speaking of form, that's okay. That's okay. As far as as far as your te your uh, your your spiritual gift inventory, that's okay. Oh yeah, we record these and we have you seen excommunication? That's right. A lot of zeros for music, don't tell Justin. <laughs> And, and with the, I love music. Yeah. So I couldn't share my gifts. You, you, uh, you can very much love music, but that may not be your particular gift. Yep, this is true. Okay, so um, I know that Brian and Janet are not here tonight, and Barb is also not here. She's going to be watching. Okay, there's Carrie. Great. Um, and let's see. Oh, I left my. Let me run over and grab my. List of things because I need my bulletins for you. But all depend on being late. Here I am. I know. It's great. Yes. This is No. No, and that's what I do. I said, you know, I said I don't feel bad leaving you because I'm the first thing to call So let, I'm but gonna I think I've got enough. Did you want this? Eventually. I will eventually, but not anymore. So I take one of those and pass it down, please. Send what what uh, are we studying tonight? We're uh, going to finish up worship, then we're going to do a little bit of talk on spiritual gifts and or giving and or evangel. Yeah, we start moving into <laughs> nitty gritty stuff. So, um, but we're going to finish up worship because we just got started with that last week. Um, a bulletin is going around here because I'm going to walk you through that tonight. So to and try and give you some in-depth, um, you know, information on that. We've got Shaylin there, and then we've got Josh, who's going to be listening to the recording. Josh wants me to. If I didn't upload it soon enough, he's right there. I'm ready. Get it up there. I love it. Um. Let's see. Okay, with that, let's uh, let me open us with a prayer. <laughs> Gracious and loving God, thank you for gathering us together tonight from our busy days and all that's involved in our daily ministry, our Monday ministries, Monday through Friday, Saturday, <laughs> Sunday ministries. And so thank you for our um our call to be your people in everyday events of our lives. And thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit that keeps us believing, keeps us in your word, and keeps us together. And so we ask for your gift of your spirit to guide us tonight. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So I was going to have us do a little icebreaker, but I think I'm just going to move us because we got a ways to go. So uh, let me just do this and get rid of that. So um, we'll talk about the purpose quite a bit next week. Um, this is where we were last week. If you see the projection, we compared a cultural event to our liturgical, as we call it, worship. And all that probably means is that we continue to worship in the way that the church has worshiped for 1500 plus years in the Western Mass, as it was called in the Catholic Church. But we still follow the process of worship that's been done for a long time. But what we did last week is we compared just how you go about worshiping. Um, and we looked at a cultural event. And you notice you know, some things right away, don't you? Um, the, the process is way simpler. 
<laughs> in a cultural event. Um, and it's probably not as complex as we even put there, or I put there as I summed up what we talked about. Um, basically, you get your ticket, you go in, and you sit down and you watch. If you look at a liturgical worship, you're greeted, There's you see a bulletin, there's you got to find your favorite pew, you know, or if you're like, you should, you should always bounce around, you know, so you meet new people. No, I'm just kidding. Do whatever you want, but not really. Try it. Anyway, try it. You'll try it. You'll like it. Um, so uh, they're speaking and responding. You're singing. You're doing things together. You're greeting. There's more. There's a prayer of the day, which kind of is, um, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. There's listening, speaking, more singing, standing, um, we say we believe, we pray for others, we then we give money, then there's social, we have the peace, like a social, you know, a little bit of a social time, um, which again, I'll explain more about that tonight. Um, we sing, um, there's a meal, there's eating and thanksgiving, uh, and then more singing and sending, you're standing up, you're sitting down, you're doing a lot. So you get the picture. We talked about this. And so to sum up the differences, this is what we talked about last week. Um, the cultural event you pay at the beginning, it's passive. It's also vicarious. You're not really experiencing it. You're experiencing it through someone else. You're watching. It's simple. It's user-friendly. It's focused on the individual that's there. In our liturgical worship, it's free. It's active. You're on stage. It's not watching. It's working. It's not really simple. It's complex to some degree. There's some complexity. And I mentioned last week that our, our worship is like playing an instrument. It's not something you can do right away. It's not quite as hard as playing what Jess is playing right now, but it, it is still, with any instrument, it takes a while to learn to play. And that's our worship has a process, and it's it's something you learn and you grow into. Um, so it's an art form, um, and there's a learning curve, like I say. So, and it, where's the focus? The focus is actually on God and God's word being delivered to us, not just as individuals, but as a people. Um, a quick one with the brief order of confession and forgiveness before we start walking through. Um, it's a corporate event. A lot of people say, why do you, it's so like everybody just confess it. But what is it that we can confess our sins as a group, not just as an individual? You know, we do say I've sinned against you and thought we have sinned. We have sinned. You know, there is an order for private confession like that used to happen back in the Catholic Church, still does. But Lutherans don't utilize that as much. But if you ever feel really broken and hurt by something done or left undone, Pastor Jonathan and I are available to sit and hear your confession and give you the absolution. So know that that's there, but we do that as a group. So notice the group context. So so here you go. So bottom line, um, I made the point before we quit last week that mindset is everything. If you come in with an entertainment mindset on the left there, and you you do a more complex process you're going to be you're going to come to this wow this is boring this is weird i don't make sense of this because it's not intended to be entertaining it's intended to worship and deliver the goods of the gospel to you but it's not entertainment focused now i pray that the, what's on the right if you come at it with a good mindset will not be boring will be engaging, but it needs you to come in thinking, I got to give this my all today. Or maybe you don't, but other people are giving it their all. So maybe some Sundays you can just barely get there. And the thanks be to God for that. That's the other great thing about doing it together. Some days you're strong, some days you're weak, some days, you know, so that's the other beautiful thing. But, but it, again, it needs a different process. And we talked about how last week churches have a have a decision to make in our culture. Are we going to throw out the historic process of worship and make it look, you know, make it look like the cultural event? And I think without being too critical, I was trying not to be too critical last week. Um, 
you can look at your big box churches, your new lives and others, and not, and some of them do a little bit more liturgy than others. You know, some of them are kind of hybrid in between. Um, but basically the process is you come in, a bunch of songs are sung. It's a nice concert. You hear a good teaching, perhaps, prayerfully, you know, for a half hour. You give an offering real quickly, maybe another prayer, some announcements, and you maybe sing us at last hymn and you're done. It's very simple. You don't have to know anything before you come in to take part in that, other than where to get your latte. You know, <laughs> but but over here, if you don't know what we're doing, it's gonna seem strange. Hopefully it will seem cool. I've had people say, I had no idea what you were doing, but it seemed like. It was really important, you know, and, and I said, yes, keep coming back. And then if everybody is extremely welcoming, they go, and also, I really felt like I mattered here, you know, then, then you've got something. So churches have a decision to make. And I would say it's probably true that the, the more of the majority of churches that are doing well numerically, et cetera, are doing the left side worship. I think that would be safe to say that your liturgical churches have struggled. Now they could be struggling for other reasons, of course, but you know, um, so the question is either do you change worship or do you educate? And what we do here is we educate people. We want them, we want you to learn to play the instrument, um, but it takes some work. And so what we're going to do for the next half hour is I'm going to try and help you learn to play that instrument, help you to know why we do what we do, when we do it, all that good stuff. Make sense? But are there holdover thoughts, comments from last week where we were? This was just enough to get us like, okay, this is where we were. <laughs> just a real quick one, because I'm taking a class in sacrament at the Portland Seminary, mm. which is a lot of people who are coming from the cultural event model. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's the professor is Anglican, and so he, this is like his cherished class. Oh, yes. And that so, he can share this oh, with this. these folks. It is a really, Anglican is going to be over here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So he, it's been interesting to, to hear people's the, reaction. But it's just really, it's a slow go, but there are people who have had that in their past who are yeah. going, I forgot all about that. Yeah. And they are realizing that they miss it. There's people who've never been in that before. They're still struggling, but now some of them are going, well, this sounds really cool. Yeah. And the premise of the book that we have is just also from an Anglican point of view is that there is a place in the evangelical slide right now for young people that they're hoping some of this will actually start if that can happen right and people are starting to put in more of that yep. that it actually starts a repair yes. because it actually is one of the things that has led to where the more um non-denominational churches even with their really successful programs are not necessarily having people flourish and right. there's still a great number that are right. going abandoning everything or leaving it yeah willow creek way back i mean i don't know bill highballs went down the <laughs> tubes with all the other you know so many of the but willow creek was one of the largest churches and they did a thing and basic uh, survey because they want to know how they were doing basically they just said we're not taking people into the depths of the faith they're just right here mm -hmm. they're on the surface mm -hmm. um and i've had people come back to slc who are like, I was in that church and I just, I want something deeper. I want something more rich. However, I've had also people who have been doing the right side mm -hmm. who have said, this is boring. This is, and I went to this church and it's exciting. It's powerful. I love, you know, they got, they got, and so sometimes they go that way too. But the question, I think most of the time it's because they didn't know why they were doing and what they were doing. It was just doing it. Yeah. Nelly. Yeah. I just, I mean, I came to the service, uh, service before I decided right. to become a member, so I kind of knew what to expect. But for those who are new, I think it's maybe important to mention what well, is start the foundation class, you know, yes. that this is more of a structured kind mm -hmm. of, rather than um, 
for entertainment purposes or for right. uh, some other action like in the yeah. movies you don't know what's gonna come up right you know but yeah. you know, try and let people know kind of what to step expect. by step and every time it's the same you know? yeah. so they know well, well, why am i here I'm, am i wasting my time yeah and what, are, what right is going place? on yeah so in our welcome bag that we hand out we do have a little explanation of this but we're redesigning our website specifically for plan a visit and in that will be exactly what you're saying yeah like, i mean i never yeah. got a book. right that's you amazing. didn't in, at the busy times in our lives we'll yeah, i think there's that. one in the north so super so busy you know yeah. maybe it's good to mention so they don't come here and get all oh attractive. absolutely my two nights here for that's a horrible place right right I what were they doing it was weird and i didn't know what to do and yeah, then. Yeah. all right now since you brought that up nelly one thing you know because i want to get to more practical things you know and we should talk since we're talking about worship we should talk about screens and we should talk about this uh -huh. so there you go <laughs> And you know what I'd like, Nelly? I'd love for you to do is go through and look at it and then say, Becky, you didn't get one either. There she goes. See, you came with your daughter and you probably snuck in and you did. Anyway, but it's actually a problem with something that we're trying to get, not volunteers, but people to serve in that way. But nonetheless, we won't go down that for the moment. But I would love for both of you to look at the stuff that's in there mm -hmm. and say, what's missing? Does it make sense? What well, doesn't make sense? Does it answer some of what you were wondering about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but let me tell you the evolution, since we're moving now into specifics of what we do, thank you, <laughs> what we do and when we do it and why, since we're moving in that direction, um, let me tell you the evolution of liturgical worship when it comes to helping people worship. Uh, the history of the Lutheran Church, Episcopal Church, Catholic Church, they all have a missal, they have a hymnal. And you come in and you need to know where to turn. And maybe the bulletin that you get tells you on page whatnot. But in the green hymnal, there's page numbers down here and there's hymn numbers back here. So if you don't know that, you're lost already. <laughs> so, so if you grow up in the church, you learn the art of worshiping. You get this hymnal. I used to before we, and I was, if I've, I've been a pastor long enough to say that we didn't print the whole service. The whole time I've been a pastor, we just actually used the hymnal. Um, and they'd have a little board up there with the hymns. Oh, yeah. And so what you did when you came in, I'd tell them, take your little newsletter and go through and find the hymns and put a paper in there. So you're ready to go. Because truthfully, after the sermon's done and we start at the end of the day, I look out there and people are going, yeah. you know. Had those things the, that the little tabs. Oh, oh, you had some. You had some mark, so you could it use them. That was cool. Did those? Did those? But, but that's cool them. because then you could mark the hymns, so you could get to them. Now, From if the you, again, yeah. if you are a guest and you come into an already complex thing and you have to negotiate that, how's your worship experience going to be? It's going to be tough. It's going to be challenging. So, what our church started doing long before I got here, printed up the whole service. You don't have to get into this hymnal at all. You've got it all right here. So if you're a guest, you can kind of walk through. But guess what? Not only do guests get lost, members get lost. Where are we? What are we? I can't read music. I don't. So it helps way better than this. Although we burn up a lot, of, uh, not burn up, but use up a lot of trees. I think, I don't know if I've decided if that's true or not. I think we use the little trees for paper. But anyway, no, no. But anyway, I, I'm not going to. like little trees. We don't have to get rid of the environmental concerns. So we, I guess a lot of people get have jobs because they work at the paper mill in Fort Townsend. <laughs> so anyway, nonetheless, we do use a lot of paper and it is an expense. So now we have technology and we, we project everything, which is really helpful for guests. 
It's also really helpful for some people who can't see well, and they can see that really well. Although there are some people who can see this, but can't see that. So we do both here. I'd still like to keep reducing this, but I think we're in a happy place right now. <laughs> um, so, but. See, because I picked this up yeah. with the yellow. Paper, yeah, the yellow. But then I don't ever use it and I turn around and put it back. And yes. I'm like, why are we printing these? Okay, so there's the thing. We could print way fewer and that's where we're headed. Or we print a really condensed. The reason we're printing these especially is the music. Mm -hmm. There are people yeah. who sing, who read music, who really love the music. And so always going to do that. Um, but, you know, and then I, one Sunday I took out all the spoken parts because they're all up there. Mm -hmm. But someone then immediately told me, well, I can't read that because of my eyesight. Mm -hmm. I can only read up close. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we try and be as inclusive <laughs> as possible. But I wanted to just mention the screen thing. It was a big deal when we did it. We did it partly because of COVID, because the choir was doing a, you know, Zoom choir and, you know, and it worked. But it's something that I think we needed to do anyway to help guests enter into our already complex process. But it's a delicate balance. Um, and I understand. I had one of our youth who doesn't like it, who's now a young adult, say, I it, worship was the only thing that didn't have a screen, and now we have That's screens. Yeah, yeah. You know, and they they didn't they didn't like they don't like the screens. But yeah, yes, please, Linda. Well, yeah, I'm getting better. I will look up. Yeah, I can read it. Ready yeah, for baby. Yeah. <laughs> but I have felt for me when I am looking down at my bulletin, I'm still feeling, still feeling like I'm praying. Mm. I'm feeling a little more humble. Yeah. You know, I'm not looking up at this new modern thing on a flat shirt. <laughs> you know, I'm reading and I'm following along with, you know, and I feel like I'm praying. I can eat more easily, close my eyes, and yeah. I don't know. No. I'm just feeling that little old fashioned pull. Yeah, I get it. I understand. I do miss the hymnal now and then. Yeah. I think yeah. you gotta drag it out for Christmas. And uh, well, the hymn sing. Coming up, uh, maybe, I, mean, I don't think he's planning to print up, uh, I don't, I, yeah. you know, but not all of our newer hymns are in this one. Helpful comment, Linda, it's true. It is a thing, yes, Val. Um, is there a way to check those out? Because I don't know anything about the hymnal, and it would take me a while, like, if I ever wanted to try to you use can it. take one home anytime. Okay. There's a whole bunch of them back here, <laughs> and then there's some in the pews, but again, we don't use them on it, it okay. rarely. Right. So there's a newer one. It's cranberry. The red one. Yeah, yes. I, I had to quote something and I had to look it up online because I couldn't find either one of those. Yeah, that's and called so, the Evangelical Lutheran Worship. This so, one is 1978. And that Evangelical Worship is like, I don't know, I want to say 10 years. No, longer than 10 years. Probably 15, 16 years. So which one would you, this is, this is the one that you mostly get? This is the one, <laughs> well, no, we probably use the new ELW because it's all online. Okay. So we probably Probably use that just as much as this one. Okay. But so I, I can go online like and get the red one then. Yes. Just to view it. Yeah. Uh, you would need our password. Okay. Okay. That's all. Right. I have other. I have other ways. Yes. You have your ways. <laughs> um, okay. Thank you. No. Just, no. No. Thank you. Because I notice there's places where people are doing things that I'm thinking must be directed that you do, like the uh, when they're doing the sign of the cross. Is it some of that's in the net? Some of that's in there. We'll talk about that. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. No, there is there is a couple spots in the brief order of confession and forgiveness. It, it has a, a red. So in the hymn, let me tell you this on the hymnals. If you get in there and look at it, rubric I think is a it means red or something. But in here there are rubrics. So there's the ba the order of the service, and then there's little red rubrics like this hymn may be sung. Uh -huh. Or this prayer will be said. So you got may rubrics and kind of must rubrics. You to get at the cr crucial core elements of the liturgy, you go to the must that will this is sung, this is done. And then there's times where it says it may be done, and they're in red. So those are the little directions in the liturgy. So if you take one of these home, which I encourage you to do so, um, you can have some fun with that. Okay. We could talk more about 
screens or not, but we got them. It's pluses and minuses, just like everything. There's trade-offs. And I get the struggle, um, but I have also tried very hard, like a lot of people thought that when we put up screens, we were going to be a big box church now. Mm -hmm. We haven't done anything different, really, than what we've been doing for a long time. So I was worried about that. Yeah, myself. Yeah, I had one person say, "The day I see a screen come up, is that we get the bouncing ball next." Yeah, we get the bouncing ball and all that. So it's really to be a guide. I will say one other thing: the flip side, Linda, of what you shared is as a pastor, and I look out this before the screens. This is what you look like in worship. <laughs> now we're singing "Almighty Fortress," you know. And I hear you better. Mm -hmm. We you sound. Don't want to hear me. No. Well, we... <laughs> so there's pros and cons to everything that way. But let's, without further ado, let's get into the specifics of our liturgy, and then we can reserve some time for some other conversation about um, practical things. Before I do that, I tell you the story I like to tell at this point. So there was um, a salesman who was a devout Christian person, and he uh, made a practice just because he was traveling. You know, he had a lot of frequent flyer miles. So everywhere he went, kind of web like your story, you mentioned when you're driving truck, you'd find <laughs> uh, you'd find a church. Well, he he didn't, after going to doing this for years and years and years, he, he learned, because he didn't like to stick out. By the way, it's the number one thing we hear about guests. Don't make me stick out. The practice of this church used to be that every guest, a visitor, was asked to introduce themselves. Yeah. Number one no-no, supposedly. Although, again, everything has its trade-offs. I've had some people say, if you wouldn't have done that, I wouldn't have met that person. I wouldn't be here anymore. And anyway, but nonetheless, he didn't like to stick out. So what he learned to do is he would just watch everyone. From the moment they were walking, and he'd just do exactly what they did. So he wouldn't stick out. So um, so he know this, he went to this one church and he noticed, let's see if I can do this. So um, if this is the front of the church, he noticed that as people walked in the front aisle, they turned to their right and reverenced. Oh. They turned to the right and bowed. And then they would go and sit down in their, their pew or seat and do worship. And when he did that, he turned and they there was just a blank wall, a blank wall, a blank white wall. So he's like, well, that's weird. And he couldn't stop thinking about it all during the service. So afterwards, he said, you know what? I usually don't stick around for the coffee hour, but I'm sticking around. I need to know why these people turn and reverence to a blank wall. We asked the first person, hey, after he got to, you know, I am new. Hey, can you tell me something? Just curious. I noticed you guys all reverence to the right as you come in the church. And the first person said, Oh, yeah, that's right. We've always done that. Yeah. Well, why do you do that? I don't know. We've always done it. Right? <laughs> he, they, he couldn't answer. So he went over to someone else. Hey, do you? I just got to ask a great question. Do you know why we turn to the right in reverence? No. Pretty soon, the whole coffee hour is like, do you know why? Do, do you know why? Do you know why? <laughs> the visitor never found out and left. Which, you know, he just, that was interesting. Well, the next year, the church has been around for a long time and needs some renovation. It needs some upkeep. So they start working on this wall. <laughs> and as they start cleaning and start getting it ready for a new coat of paint, they notice something underneath the paint. And there is the Mary with the baby Jesus. Under mm. the and they learn. Mm. That's why mm. we turn to the right and reverence. But what idiot painted it over it? I didn't know it. <laughs> but so guess what we're going to do right now? We're going to take some paint off. <laughs> we're going to take some paint off. So you know why we do what we do. Okay. All right. Here you go. You've got your bulletin. I'm just going to walk you through it. This is the um let's see this is the this is the flow this is where we're going you can see up here there are five parts to our worship we gather we hear god's word we respond to god's word 
We share in the meal and we are sent. That is the five things we do. And then each of the specific things help us do those things. You know, the children's sermon, readings, choir anthem, sermon, hymn of the day, all of that helps us hear the word. It, all of that's what that's about. When we get to the creed and the prayers and the peace and the, I forgot the hymn of the day in there. No, that's in the other part. That's hearing of the word. Creed is kind of transition. I'll get to there in point. But then that we were, that helps us respond. It, you know, helps us respond. Then we share in the meal. All of that's about sharing in the meal. Then we are sent. We're out into the world. So that's what the benediction is about and the hymn and the sending words. And so the gathering part, the, everything we do at the beginning is about getting us together as a community. We live in an individualistic culture. That's everything of what we are. The individual, 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 social media. Blah, blah, blah. It's all about, you know, and that, that's fine. It has its pluses and minuses too. But we need to be gathered together. We don't just start up with the gospel reading. Why? Well, because we think we need to get you together, establish you as a congregation, as a people. All right, so let's start walking through it. Under the gather part, we have the brief order of confession and forgiveness. I already mentioned this a little bit, but you'll notice that we start with the name of the Trinity. Sometimes in the new hymnal, the language is, blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins. We usually use the actual name of the Holy Trinity in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So why do we do that right then? Whose name were you baptized in? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The way you came into the church was through baptism, and the way you come into this worship service is you get the name that was given to you in your baptism placed upon, into your ears and upon your heart in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or in the name of the, the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins. So there's who is God? He's merciful and forgives sin. And so then the, in the brief order of confession, there's a lot of variations sometimes in how we do it, but there's a little intro into what you're going to do in confessing your sins. So, for instance, in this one, God of all mercy and consolation, come to help of your people, turning us from sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow in the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. In the green hymnal, the old, uh, older brief order of confession and forgiveness, some of you that grew up with the green hymnal and know it really well, um, uh, like, I guess I kind of grew up, although I grew up with the old red hymnal, the Missouri Synod hymnal, but um, we have, there's a wonderful part in here. It, it quotes, uh, it says, it first says, God, you know our hearts and our minds. There's no secrets are hid from you. And then it quotes a passage from scripture, from the letter of John, the first letter of John. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we quote a Bible passage. Unfortunately, they didn't put it in parentheses so you knew where it was from. Most Lutherans don't know that pretty much all of what we do in Scripture, in Scripture, in our worship, is singing or speaking the Bible. The, Bible yeah. um, the first thing that those who are have a more simplest simple style of liturgy and who call what we do with our liturgy lethargy, um, <laughs> the first thing they'll say is, where's that in the Bible? Well, there isn't a method of worship in the Bible. There is no order of worship in the Bible. But we sing the Bible more than any of those churches. Um, for, and I'll, I'll give you some more in a minute. But anyway, so we introduce the confession and then we pray. We, can, we have a moment of silence and we confess our sins. We use a general confession. In the Catholic Church, um, you would have to go to confession and name all your specific sins. We kind of think that that's unrealistic. <laughs> 
<laughs> or like Luther, Luther was in the confessional about every hour, you know, <laughs> He's, and his confessor gets like, really, you're back again, go back and do something interesting, come back. <laughs> but anyway, so we have a gender that encompasses everything, and the powerful part of it is known and unknown. Yeah, there's stuff I do that I didn't know I even did. I stepped on this person's toes, I was totally insensitive, and it totally... <laughs> Sometimes it happens with my spouse, you know? I mean, it does happen, right? Um, <laughs> you know, so known and unknown, powerful. But it's not just stuff I do, but what? Undone. Undone. Those are sins of omission. So we we have a order of confession and forgiveness, and then we receive the absolution. You're going to receive the absolution in like four or five places in this one service. I'll try and point them out to you as we walk through. Um, but anyway, so we start off by, by saying, forget what lies behind. Receive the promise. Receive the forgiveness of sins. Now we can worship. You know, oh, but I'm thinking about what I know. That's over. Focus on the word. Focus on worship. You know. Uh, I don't know if why we do this is the same reason why Jewish people did this back in the ancient world. But if you go to the Holy Land today, you'll see they have all these excavated, they call them um, mikvah. And it's a ritual bath. And they have them outside the temple. If you went into the temple, you would always take a bath. Before you go into worship, you clean yourself off, you know, and all this. We see them in before synagogues, they had mikvah, they, they would do this, they, it was a part of the, well, it's kind of the spirit of that as we, we confess all the ways we miss the mark and we receive the absolution and we enter in, cleaned, made right. The other cool thing about this is talk about how does this gather us together? And it says, well, it says to everybody, there isn't one person here who's here because they're a good person and they've done everything right. We all have fallen short. We are all broken people. If if people could understand, it's like if they came in and they'd never been there, it's like, wow, I've had a horrible week and so have they. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I'm not alone. Is it you get that? Yeah. So then we get to so cool. That's the brief order of confession and forgiveness. Why we do it. Then we have a hymn that gathers us. Sometimes it has the theme of the day, sometimes not. It's it's all about gathering, pulling us together and praising God. In the ancient church, they would start in one place and then go into the place of worship. And so this was called a processional hymn because everybody, like you're kind of supposed to do on Palm Sunday, everybody gets their palms and you stand out in the rain in the Northwest and get totally <laughs> soaked. And then you march in, you know, singing, you know, uh, all glory, a lot and honor. And, and we don't do that because it's usually raining. And, anyway, <laughs> so, but, but it's kind of like that. So it used to be called the processional hymn. And then now, instead of having the whole congregation, we process the cross and the light for the acolyte, and we bring that in during the gathering hymn. But it probably functions more like a gathering. Um, then, greeting. Apostolic greeting. Yes, please, Tom. The, uh, in other churches, like the Anglican Church or Episcopal Church that I used to go to, the recessional hymn included the Pastor, pastoral team, yep. the acolytes, and often the choir going at the same time. So yep. I mean, yes, the choir would process. So it was a pretty significant procession. Yes, yes. And we still do that occasionally. Actually, the other thing they process is the Bible. Yes. Yeah. And we still do that occasionally. The more higher up church, high church, we call it high. We're kind of middle church at SLC, but you might have a more elaborate procession. Yeah. Yeah. Which kind of echoes back to when they started in one place and then moved into the sanctuary. They made that as well. Ordination. Oh, and ordinations. Yeah. All the pastors process in and their things. Yeah. Pastors. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So processionals are good because it helps gather us. So then the greeting, which comes from the Bible, 
from 2 Corinthians, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And then you say, and, and the reason you say it, some in the old language was, and with your spirit, but it's, and also with you. Right away, that tells you something. It, am I coming here to watch the pastor do a bunch of stuff? No. The pa I need to hear it from you, too. I, this is why I love, I, I don't I don't want to be critical of Catholic Church, but sometimes I go in and the priest of the raised the Lord Jesus Christ and, and, and watch all of you. You know, <laughs> you better not say it that way to me. No, I'll say it. I want you to mean it. Like, so when I say the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you, I'm looking. I'm not like, Kid, I need to hear too, Linda. No, yeah. I, I was thinking of Mr. Emily. Yes. And she would she would say that, and then we, we would respond with, and also with you. Like yes. if we actually had our hands. Oh, going, nice. Please do. We had our hands going. And, Please do. By the way, some people ask me, can I raise my hand? I feel inspired. Absolutely. See, I'm still trying to figure out how which direction this goes. <laughs> and that doesn't matter. But okay. west and east. See, that that's was, that's I'm a west. Lefty. I do it backwards. That's a west and east church. The Eastern Orthodox do, do it one way, and the Catholics do it another way, and they have a reason for that. And don't ask that; I, I do not know the answer. Okay. <laughs> Lutherans will say that is whatever works. Make the sign of the cross. Oh, we'll, good. We'll talk about why, we'll talk we'll talk about why you do that too. Absolutely. Okay. So so we've got the greeting, but also, what do you hear in that greeting? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Son, the love of God, Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. It's one of the places that we hear the Holy Trinity spoken. Boom, right there in Scripture. So you, there's the there's the name again. You were given it before the confession of forgiveness. Now you're given it in the greeting. Okay. Do you know where that comes from? Yes, it's second. It's at the very end of the letter of Second Corinthians. Okay. I forget the chapter and verse, but if you just go to the end of Second Corinthians, it's actually Paul's kind of, you know, final blessing, yeah. which we use as the greeting. Now he'll in other places use the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, or but he, but those the three are put together there. So again, we're quoting scripture. The curie. Okay, so now we have the curie. And it, it is cool. And I'm not saying this just because Olivia is here, but it is cool that right now we have a couple settings that we do that were written by Justin. And I really love them. I particularly love this one. Um, so we move into what's called the curie. This goes way back in the church. I forget when it first started, but it was it's called the Kyrie Eleison, even though there was a famous song, pop song not too long ago by who was the group? Kyrie Eleison on the word. Yeah. Come on, come on. Oh, no. Car? No. no, it wasn't the cars, yeah. Mm. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so Kyrie means Lord in Greek. So we call it the Kyrie, but it's really the Kyrie Eleison. Eleison is have mercy. So how did, so again, remember, we're still gathering. When the lepers saw Jesus from afar, what did they say to Jesus as he was coming? Lord, have mercy. How do you approach Jesus? Lord, have mercy. And now notice, Justin's kind of works in a little bit different way, but... Um, he said, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on the earth. So, it, you know, the other way to, we could rearrange it. I haven't talked to him about this, but <laughs> you could start with earth, then us, and then me, because notice what it does. Now you're gathered, but but it still does the same thing. It doesn't matter what order they are. So so we we cry out, we approach God with Lord, have mercy, because that's what we're doing. We're coming to hear God speak to us. Jesus is coming. Lord, have mercy. Boom. So we have the Kyrie. We have another hymn of praise, which is a, a, a gathering, and it's a praise song. Now, this is the victory. Remember how I said we sing scripture? If you wanted to write down in your bulletin, you can look this up. Revelation, like the first 
eight chapters. <laughs> Go find the poetry parts. This is the feast of victory for our God. For the lamb who is slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. That's the Bible. That's the book of Revelation. That's what the saints are singing around the heavenly throne, according to the letter and the, the apocalypse of John, the book of Revelation. So even though Lutherans don't, we're not crazy about the book. It's probably, we, we like it. It's in the Bible, but it's probably not our go-to. You know? I mean, I can't say when I need some help from the Bible, I jump to Revelation. I got to be honest. I got to be honest. I usually go to the Apostle Paul or the Gospel of John, um, you know, or to Jesus. and like, But because Revelation is this apocalypse, kind of weird. But we sing it every Sunday. Did you know that? Most people had didn't know. Why do we do that? So, well, it's right from the Bible. All right. So now I, I got to keep going because I could do a couple hours on this. Um, then we get to the prayer of the day. What did, what's the first thing you do when you learn to write English, when you learn to write in your English class? What is supposed to be there at the beginning of a paragraph? What do you call it? Topic sentence. Teacher over there, Marilyn. <laughs> Topical <laughs> sentence. You don't have a paragraph unless in the first or first sentence or second one that doesn't tell you what's going to be in that paragraph, pretty much. Well, guess what? The well, Tom, you know, some some of us don't need that. You know, you've gone way beyond that. That's that's old school. That's just, yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, I think you should have a top. Be fifty two. So the but. The reason I use that analogy, as flawed as it is, Mr. Holmes, um, <laughs> I, Tom and I, we're yeah, great. We so anyway, the reason I use that analogy is we're finishing off the gathering. We have, it's in the old, for you old timers, <laughs> it used to be called the collect, the collect in the old hymnal. And I'm an old timer, by the way. It was in the Red Hymn, it's called Call It, because the presiding minister collected the theme of the day. Now we call it the prayer of the day because that's what it does. Look at this prayer from last Sunday. Um, this, yes, okay. Almighty God, you call us and gather us into your community to announce the authority of Jesus and open people's ears through the word. May Jesus' authority and promise reign in our lives. Now, I don't know if you remember the sermon. I'm sure you do from last Sunday. <laughs> but anyway, you would remember probably that what I talked about was the authority of Jesus in our lives. He is the one that can say what, what things are and what things are. And he says, you're a child of God. So can you see that in this prayer? So if you want to know what's coming, What's Jonathan going to talk about? Because we, in the in the hymnal, they give you prayers of the day for each Sunday that someone has tried to write to work with the scriptures. And sometimes they're okay. I look at them, but I usually don't use them. We write our own. Okay. We, we write our own prayer of the day because we want it to give you a little, oh, that's what's coming. Okay. Okay. That's what's coming. So listen to the prayer. Why do we have the Lord be with you and also with you? When we do that, by the way, it's a way of saying, listen up. Something cool is happening. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Okay. And then we hit the prayer of the day, which is the topical sentence that's for the scriptures. Then we move because I got I want to get Webb and Olivia. I want to get this before they head out. So then we move to hearing the word. I know, I know you, I know you like the children's sermon best of all, I know, <laughs> anyway, but the children's sermon is kind of a little bit of a prayer of the day too, you know, it just kind of, you know, and it includes the kids, we love it, it's spontaneous, you never know what's going to happen, it's 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 a favorite part of the service, one of mine. Um, readings, choir anthem, did you know that's why the choir anthem is typically there? Sometimes it's in the offertory because of time considerations or something, but usually the choir anthem preaches, okay? It's designed to preach. Is that uh, the musical meditation? Yes. I'm, okay. I'm calling it the choir anthem, but the musical, because it might be a solo, it might be, but it's in the word time because it's proclaiming something to you. It's it's preaching. <laughs> it's, it's proclaiming good news. 
Uh, obviously, it can be in other places very appropriately, but that's one reason why the, the musical meditation is there. Obviously, we have the sermon. Um, one little note, the part on here, Alleluia, let me tell you where that comes from. So we sing, remember with the gospel reading, what happens? Mm -hmm. We stand up and we we sing, you know, Alleluia. I, I know, for some reason, it's not coming to me, but um, that's that was the 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 words of each other. Yes, right. Do you know where that's from in the Bible? So Peter in the Gospel of John and all the disciples, Jesus is giving them a really hard saying, and he's talking about his body and blood and and, and eat, eating and drinking that and. You know, he's and in that context, he's not really talking about the Lord's Supper. He's talking about his word, his self, his being. But nonetheless, he's he gives them this hard saying. And a lot of the disciples, what do they do? They run away. They run away. I'm out of here. This is this is way more than I bargained for. I'm out. And Jesus says to Peter, are you are you going to go away, too? And what does Peter say? Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? He doesn't say alleluia. He says, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We, we're quoting Peter at this point because Jesus is going to come and speak to us. So we're saying in this Alleluia, hey, I'm, I could leave. It's a tough, I'm, I'm going to listen. So it's good news, but it's also like I'm going to put myself before Christ. And let him speak to me. I'm not going to head out. So that's why we sing the Alleluia right before we hear the gospel on the sermon. Okay, keeping going here. Taking paint off the wall. So, hymn of the day, the one that you often can't sing because it's <laughs> really focused on the scripture of the day. Anyway, we, we, we do not err too much on that side. But we try and pick a hymn that names, the that keeps preaching. Like the prayer of the day preaches, we try and have a hymn that does. So if you can't sing it, it's no problem. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Read it. Listen to it. <laughs> it's okay. Don't get too flustered at that point. Now, if you can't sing every song in that, I can you just let me have it. But not this one. This one is supposed to be the theme of the day. So, you know, sometimes it might be a new, a new tune. It might be a little hard, but usually we do pretty well, but but that's what the hymn of the day is about. Okay, now we've heard the word. Yes, God's word has worked on us. Now we're going to respond. What does Paul say? If you believe in your heart and confess with your lips, you shall be saved. That's what he says in Romans. Well, now we got the creed. Now this is interesting. The Apostles' Creed. This is your baptism creed. This is the creed that Christians have been using in baptisms, or at least some form of it, going way, way, way back. So, why is it here? In the older liturgies, the creed was before the sermon. And, and I've always had it after the sermon. So, when I go to churches that still do this, it's weird, but I found out why. The reason they had it before the sermon is it basically said to the pastor, here's the faith, stick with this. It's part of, it's preaching, it's the creed tells the story. Luther uses this, as you know, to explain the whole of the Christian faith. Father, we went through this a few, a few weeks ago or last week. Um, so, but where we have it, it does both. It preaches, it finishes the preaching, but it also now gives you a way. You know, Lutherans don't have altar calls, do they? <laughs> no, we don't, we don't have altar calls because... You know, it's not all about your personal decision and all that. We know the theology difference. But did you know we do have an altar call? It's right here. I believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ. See, we do have an altar call, but we do it together. And we don't just do it when we backslid for because we backslide every week, if we're honest. So, so now you get to stand up and say, I believe. And some Sundays you may have to be troubled, struggling to believe, but the people next to you are believing with you and for you. See? So it's a it is a kind of altar call, although we don't want to push it too far because it's also preaching to us. It's also telling us good news. Okay, let's keep going. Got five minutes. So yes, please. Why is there an asterisk after the dead? Beautiful. 
In some manuscripts of the ancient creed, it has hell. Oh. And the older version, the green hymnal, he descended to hell. And it's called the harrowing of hell. And I love that because Jesus went and the gospel went to everywhere. There isn't any place that it didn't go. And he went and and but also some of the older manuscripts of the creed say from the dead. It's all based in a scripture from Second Peter where we hear that Jesus went and preached to the spirits in prison. And we don't have there's now there's some people that say they know exactly what that means. But the vast majority of folks say, wow, it could mean a lot of different things. But in essence, what we say, he descended to the dead. He went and preached the gospel. The, the good news went to those who are gone before us, you know, there wasn't any place that the good news didn't reach. So great question. So that's why that has an asterisk. So now we were responding. What's the next thing? We're going to pray. Yeah. What? Yes, please, Tom. Before, yeah. you go to the, no, before we leave the creed. Creed, yes, because there's... I've had a few friends of mine say, I'm tired of the same old stuff. And we just mumble through it each Sunday, yeah. blah, blah, blah. One of the things they mumble through is the Apostles' Creed. Yeah. I wonder if there's any way you can do a preamble some Sunday reminding them of what this actually is and yeah. how important it is. Yes. I just I, yeah. throw that out. Yeah, no, so thank throw you. It away. I, no, no, I, I thought I do say sometimes we respond by confessing our yeah. faith in the yes. words. Yes. But, yes. but that's not exactly what you're, you know, I, like, let's, I, it would be good maybe sometimes say, now, this is why we're doing this, you know. Mm -hmm. I thought about doing that before every element like I'm doing right now, but it just chops everything up. Oh, yeah. It just, it, it, I've tried it in previous parish, and it just kind of, it's like you're in a dance, and then you stop, and then the you talk about why. to a show off, who has it, and he just puts his wallet together. Oh, yeah, nice, nice. It rattles the whole thing off. He's like, girl, feels cool. <laughs> and I'm just, yeah. And, yeah. In Latin. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a great example of if you know why you're saying it, when you're yeah. saying it, it yeah. makes a difference, doesn't it? Okay, so let's keep going. Bill, I would just say Please. one thing if we would slow down. Slow down. I, I think we did it in 32 seconds. seconds. Okay, I, I will. Take, I didn't time it. I will but take I'm that. Me, it was so fast this last week, and somebody has has said to me, "We we do it so fast. I don't think people even think yeah. about what they're saying." So, you know, it would take us 30 more seconds to say it. A little slower. I'm going to take that into advisement for sure. So why do we pray when we do? Now we're going to pray for the whole people of God. What do you do once you've heard the word? Well, you confess your faith then you and you pray. And so we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This is not just us doing a prayer. After. This is the prayers of the people. We do pause. And ask you, give you a spot to name names. I encourage you to verbally, out loud, say people's names. I would love it on a Sunday morning if I heard uh, uh, just a rumble of different names. But we're 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 nervous about that. We're, you can we're, hear a rumble, but you can hear them. Not I many. can hear some. Yeah, yeah a few. Yeah. But, I can hear some. Um, but yeah. try it. I don't. I guilty. I don't. Yeah, try it. It takes some getting used. It to. takes some getting used to. Certain yeah. churches are. Yeah. So um, let's we can double back on some of these, but I want to get a couple more before Webb and Olivia have to go to warm up. And you can't go until I finish. <laughs> Tell Justin, I'm sorry we didn't get warmed up. He's done. Uh, he can. So um, peace. What else do you do? So we start practicing the faith in worship. If you didn't know that, you learn to pray. You learn to confess your faith. Now the peace of the Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord, you can give a hug, you can do whatever you want. Don't hug unless, the, you know, depending on the new person, you know, there are people. I I had a German congregation in my first congregation, and when I, they never did the peace. They never did the peace, and it was tough. They, it was tough. Like, you want me to what? Hug somebody? What? We don't have this frivolous gregarious stuff and i said look it's in the bible and i got out and said paul said greet each other with a kiss of peace and then they really cleared up <laughs> so um but no we greet each other but note we, the peace of the lord be with you so there is a spot where jesus says if you have an issue against your brother or sister take care of it before you take your offering some people say that's what the peace is symbolic of i'm not 
that's that's a lesser importance to me. I think that's a good thing to do. But um, for me, the peace is looking around to people and looking them in the eye and saying, the peace of the Lord be with you. Not just the peace of the Lord be with you. You have a moment to extend Christ's love to someone. And you might think it's not powerful, but I can tell you many testimonies of stories of people who have said, that just touched me so much. I see people crying during the peace. Okay. Mm -hmm. So take that. You, so what, again, we're practicing the faith. What does it look like to be a Christian? Well, you share the love of God with people. You pray, you confess your faith. Then you also give. Now notice where the money is. It's not at the beginning. It's after the word. It's responding to the word. And so that's the place we take the offering. It's kind of messed up now, truthfully, because we got all this online giving stuff. And I use it too. I don't put anything in the offering plate. Of course, I'm always up there doing anything, something anyway. But um, that reminds me of something when I asked my wife many years ago when our kids were little, what do you think of my sermon? She said, Bill, I haven't heard a sermon in like five years because <laughs> she's chasing the kids. <laughs> so anyway, but but I do look at her. She usually tells me if I'm on track by yeah. If she goes like this. Yeah, right. If she goes, if she goes <laughs> like this, I know, you know, change directions, whatever. So, um, but, you know, some people, this is a cool thing that some people do. They give their their first fruits amount online with the app. Some of them do wait and do it during the offering. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Mm -hmm. You can do that. You can do that. Now, a lot of us, though, have it automatically coming out. Great. Bring 10 bucks, bring 20 bucks, bring five bucks, bring a, and put it in there. Yeah. Because that's the bad thing about online giving is you don't have that symbolic act of giving into the plate as you know, now the bad part, of course, guests feel like they have to pay to play, you know, they have to pay to be a part of it. And I, sometimes I even want to just say, if you're a guest of ours, don't worry. Yeah. You know, this is not, you know, so, but but again, there's pluses and minuses to everything. So we got the armplay. Now we got to get the great Thanksgiving. Um, so so there you go. Then we have an offertory hymn. We're bringing up the gifts, and we're moving them. The offertory hymn: "Let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fill the brim our cup of blessing." You know, this this offertory song, which is really beautiful, that Justin wrote. Um, let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fill the brim of cup of blessing. Gather, gather the dreams that unite them. Praise the author. Grace our table. So the offertory hymn moves us to the next thing. Okay, and then we share in the meal. Now, and the part that I really wanted Webb and Olivia to hear before they go is this stuff about the meal, and then then off you go. So we, when you say a, the, when you have a meal at home. Perhaps you say a what before you eat? A blessing. Grace. Grace. Thanksgiving. Paul says that our food is made holy by our giving thanks. That's actually where this comes from, praying for a meal. Because there's a big question in Corinth about whether you could eat meat that had been sacrificed into the, to a god in the you know, temple, and then it came into the marketplace. Could I eat it or not? And so he says, the way you sanctify your meal is you give thanks to God for it. So, so what do we do before the meal of meals? We have a great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Come on, let's do it. No. Then I say, lift up your hearts. Do you, you know, and it's so sad. if I said, lift up your hearts, I love you. no, what I'm going to do is go. Lift up your heart. Something really awesome is happening. Get ready. Lift up your hearts. And you say, we lift them to God. We expect something really cool to happen. That's why we do that. Um, it is right to give thanks and praise, etc. So we do that. Then we go into what's called the preface. It just sets the meal in the season. If it's Pentecost, if it's Easter, we hear about the resurrection. And so it does that. I won't go into that. And then the really cool thing, the holy, holy, holy. Um, and I love this one. Lord God Almighty, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Mm -hmm. Now, you have to know where this is from. Isaiah 6. The prophet Isaiah, when he was called to be a prophet, was swept into the temple or the heavenly temple. I'm not sure which one. And he sees God. 
And there are seraphim, these winged creatures. And Isaiah is freaked out because he's in the presence of God and he's going to die. You see God, you're going to die. God's holy, you're not. Well, the seraphim sweep and bring a coal and touch his lips and clean, cleanse his lips and forgive him his sins so he can be in the presence of God. Guess what the seraphim were singing? Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Why do we sing that right then? Well, because what do we believe is happening in the Lord's Supper? The heavens are opening. The heavens are opening. Um, and the door is open. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's fine. So so the heavens are opening because that's what we believe is especially happening in the Lord's Supper. And I'm almost almost there. Then, then, but there's something else we sing. It's not always in every uh, holy, holy. It's not in this one. But sometimes we sing, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. When, when, where does that come from? Remember what special day? There's a special Sunday. We say that. Palm, Palm. Palm Sunday. What do they people say? Hosanna. Not blessed is because why? Because Jesus was coming. So what do we do? We sing Isaiah 6 and from the Palm Sunday gospel, where the heavens are open and Jesus is running. Now that changes when you sing the Sanctus. Sanctus means holy. Yeah. Next time. Um, so we have the meal. We receive the Lord's Supper. We share it. And then after that, get out of here. <laughs> We're, you're sent. You're sent out into the world. The benediction. Um, and you guys, if you you can take off it. That's if I wanted you to get the great set. Thanksgiving. Keep going. You're set. No, yeah, you're, you're set. You're sent out. The benediction. Well, please. This is on the I Sunday school teacher, which was my English teacher and senior. Yeah. And she said, when you do the Lord's Prayer and the Creed, do it like you're preaching it. Yeah. Love it. Speak it out. Yes. And I've had a few comments in my life. Good for you. You do it. I love that because you are preaching. And you know what? Now that you say that, we're preaching to each other. Right. You know? Yeah. yeah. And some Sundays, you may not be able to get the words out, tears or sat, whatever, but other people are getting it out. They're get they're preaching into your ears. Yeah. Once in a while, it's going to turn around. <laughs> you know, it's like, are you this cocky or something? <laughs> <laughs> well, not everybody has the beautiful double bass voice that you have. But nonetheless, I love that. Well, I love that. Love that. Yeah. And we do, we take the words of Jesus, the Lord's Prayer, this is his prayer he gave us, and the words of institution, and we put those with the bread and wine, because that's what we believe makes it, this, you know, makes it the body and blood of Christ for us, is Jesus with words. It's not Pastor Bill having the magic, or mm -hmm. Pastor Jonathan. It's your investment in us, we have that specific calling, and then, yeah, so there you go. Enjoy. Um, yeah, I know we've used up most of our time with taking off the paint. But, I mean, if you know why you do this, it changes. Sonny Cannell, and he wouldn't mind me mentioning his name. He just had a valve replacement and everything. He's He grew up in the Armenian church. Oh. And um, he's always been in liturgical church services. He sat right there. When I did this lecture, and, this, and he had tears in his eyes. And he said, you know, Pastor Bill, I've done this my whole life, and I have no idea why. And, and like, well, and I have to say that now I, I'm almost sorry we're leaving for California Friday. Now yeah. I've got my cheat sheet, yeah. and I want to take it no matter what right. I have and say, okay, now I understand. Yeah. This means so much more. Yes, Carrie. And you know what? If you find a liturgical church, whether it's Lutheran, Episcopal, Catholic, although they probably wouldn't want you to, they probably wouldn't want you to take the Lord's Supper. Um, but but um, it's even if they have different music. See, this is this is they still have the process, the order of service. So there's lots of musical settings. You know, the one we don't do anymore is the one that Marty Haugen wrote. The 
now the feast and celebration. We need to, a lot of, some people want to bring that back. Yeah, now the feast and celebration. Yeah, yeah, it was very, it's very long, so it's, I can't preach as long. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. Going back a ways to yeah. the prayer of the day. Yes, prayer of the day. When I was doing, when I was being a liturgist way back when, uh, I always thought that the prayers of the day written by you and Jonathan. Yeah. For the most part, grammatical correct. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. Very, God, there's I'm a, happy if there's for the most part. I'll take so, for the most part. So I always felt that that dragged us into the relevance of, of the here and now in what's happening in our world. And I think that's an important part of that. So it's yes, and where moment. and where you're at because is, you were you talk about and pray about things that need to be talked about. Right. Yeah, yes, yeah you're talking not about the prayers of the day, so but the prayers the after the creed. The day, after the creed. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Creed. yeah. They're, yeah. they're yeah. the prayers of the people, the prayers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, Tom. That brings takes us into real life. Right. That's exactly. Beautiful. I love that. Yeah. And although I can tell you I was enjoying that. It's, I can tell you, it's not always easy to write no. a neutral prayer about <laughs> about current events, yeah. like after the presidential election. It's the hardest Sunday to write <laughs> because you know you got some people who are happy and some people are really unhappy and or some people, yeah. yeah, whatever. But but oftentimes events, big events, you know, that happen in our culture, we want them in the prayers. Mm -hmm. But how do you do that? Is delicate sometimes but thank you yeah. that is that is it's real life at that point I would just say a good line. thank you i just wanted to say a, a lord's prayer yes ever since you very kindly came to the hospital yeah so sick yeah and you sat on the edge of the bed with him and you held his hand and said lee our, our lord and savior has you in the palm of his hand yeah and you were talking with him, and then all of a sudden, you guys kind of broke into the the Lord's Prayer, and I was standing there, hoping that my dad wouldn't mess up, <laughs> and he recited it perfectly. Yes, the two of you, and I think of that every single wow. Sunday now. I close That's my great. eyes, and I can see my dad's face. Prayer. Yeah. That's cool. It, it, yeah. Well. Oh. Yeah, love it, love it. I, I was just going to mention that. That I after you could maybe one of your Sunday morning Sunday school classes, you could do something similar to this because this would be good for everybody. Yeah. Maybe I'll just take one of them and or two of them and or like this. Yeah, you know, and, before, and just yeah, and just do this. Especially I can do that. Yeah. Make sure the right people are there. <laughs> Yeah, well, right, because people don't come to this event here that you guys are, and I don't know, you know, like I say, I've, I've tried to do it during worship right. and, and take a little, but it just, just, it's like dancing, and then you stop yeah. and say, okay, now I'm going to give you a, I'm going to do a spin and this, and, you know, it just, yeah. you're talking yeah. about it rather than doing it, and it, it just doesn't, uh, doesn't work. You don't do this every Sunday. Yeah. Calm down. And yeah. Start and say that we started the font. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The gathered. That's the absolutely. That's the way we came into the church. That's right. That's the way we, a lot of a lot of churches now are putting big fonts in the narthex. A lot of the Catholic churches. Yeah, and in the beginning. And and liturgically, they're doing that to make sure you remember how you came into this congregation. But you could fall in, and that's a little dangerous. <laughs> the one in the newer Catholic church I've been to has this beautiful baptismal font where you go in, you know, and, and which I would love. I'd love to, when I do a baptism, <laughs> I'd love to that. You die with Christ, you're raised with Christ. Beautiful symbolism. You don't need to. All you need is a little bit of water. A little bowl is fine. But since it's a big deal, they're they're as our church architects, they're trying to make bring back baptism as a big deal. And so they're doing that. But nonetheless, you start at the font. Our font did not originate was not originally where it is. It was in the narthex. When at least that's what I was told that when the church was first built up here, that's where it was designed to be. Um, so people, again, saw the font as they came in, to, you know, so anyway, but there's, again, more, more than one right way to do it. Okay. 
questions about this? This is a crucial. I'm really glad we've taken time on this. It, um, and there's probably lots of things I've forgotten to tell you. Maybe I'll just tell you one last fun thing because um, I'm kind of a nerd with archaeology stuff. And some of you have heard me say this probably multiple times. The benediction, we do different ones because you don't do always the same. But the one that's the classic is called the Arianic blessing because Aaron, Aaron was the what brother of Moses, brother-in-law of Moses, um, kind of Moses's right hand person, um, and he was given this benediction, this blessing, and and you know what it is: the Lord bless you and keep you; the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you; the Lord look upon you with favor, or the old way, lift up His countenance, His countenance. The one. upon you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this Sunday, next time I do that, I'm going to look at you. Lift up his countenance. Because, um, again, they're always trying to like, well, we don't talk like that today. And so they're trying to, but that's fine. So here is the cool thing about that. Think about it. If you think about any benediction, not just for you right now, but for when you head out in your car. Think about this. So the Lord bless you when you get behind that wheel. The Lord keep you when you show up to work tomorrow or when you go home and your kid's struggling the lord make his face shine upon you when you go into the y to get some exercise or you go into the grocery store see the benediction is for you now but it's sending you out so the lord make his face and in in hebrew the word face is really powerful it's like anyway it's like the shine that the, the you, you see somebody's face, you know, just shine. May they see God in you um, um, and lift up his countenance or his favor upon you. So so that's the gift you take with you. It's like if you could take it and put it in a container and you could just take it with you, you should do it. You, you think about it that way. But the cool thing about that particular blessing Think about, and, th and this gives me a way to say, maybe finish this. It, it is meaningful to me that Christians have been worshiping in this process for about, you know, at least 1,500 years or more. That's meaningful to me. Now let's go to this benediction. When did, was Aaron around? Well, 1200 BC, so, you know, they, people debate things, but it goes way back. And so if you want to believe that, well, God gave this benediction 1,200 years before Christ. So, you know, do the math. That's a long time ago. Well, you know, they're always doing excavating stuff in the Holy Land and up north um, where the northern kingdom would have been. Uh, they I forget which tell or which city they were it, it was found in, but they came across a little silver scroll. Just a little, little silver scroll. Um, didn't know what was in it. He was so fragile they couldn't take it apart. They, you know, it's just as it a little silver scroll that somebody clearly had as a meaningful object. And um, they did figure out because of what the stratification of where it was found. They dated it around 800 BC, so 800 years before Christ. Now. You know, even when Jesus was around, you know, the oldest Hebrew manuscripts didn't go back that far, probably. <laughs> so scholars debate about when was the actual Old Testament written. I mean, they, we don't even, but guess what they found when they could use the new modern technologies of reading what that scroll had on it? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The area of blessing and that little scroll 800 years before Christ. So think about how long people have been hearing those words. Now, to me, that just gives me goosebumps. Yeah. Now, a lot of people are like, well, you know, but again, you don't know if you don't know. So I'm always, that's what I'm trying to do is help you understand the depth. Of this, because really we can talk. We don't have much time to talk about the practical parts of the Christian life. Um, read, watch those videos. But really, this is the practical part of Christian life. This is Christian life. What we do in worship is our life outside of church. 
too. If we think about it, it's, it is kind of practicing how to be a Christian. We do that every Sunday. So, all right. Other thoughts, anything, please, Nellie. I hope that's okay. Absolutely. But, uh, why does it say I'll say it's Spanish? Is it Spanish? It's Spanish, right? The, um, the Lord now sends us forth. That is a, uh, from our hymnal that we take it from, it is a Spanish taken song. Oh. It's from the, you know, um, and so in a lot of, a lot of ELC congregations are Hispanic. And so in the hymnal, they've included both. And that there are some other songs. There are some songs that we use from Africa that have, yeah. have the, the Swahili or the... So they have to add that to... They don't have to. They, they do it just so you know where it's from. And, you know, if one spoke Spanish, you know, they, that those congregations could use that hymnal as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Great question. No. Nope. On the benediction, mm -hmm. that was one thing that years and years ago, I, I don't know it was a baby, maybe I don't know. Uh, the pastor at the time, they we were all the same age, but he said, you know, that's the one thing you really listen to me when I say yeah. this to you. If there's nothing else that <laughs> right. you get distracted. I mean, there yeah. was, you know, eight families with all these kids. He's like, I want you to to look at me when I say nice. this. Nice. And we eventually because he said you know you he'd say you're on a mission from god mm -hmm. so we started putting on our blues brothers glasses at the when after he'd say the benediction we'd put on our blues brothers <laughs> yeah. hey, but to this hey. day i mean we're just going to be 29 yeah when you or anybody else says the benediction i have to see you yeah and i will move out Good for you i'll good give for you that and um communion yeah you know preparing yep. the communion yep. Good i need to be able to see that love the rest of it love it yeah because yeah. hearing it and seeing it is good yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah love it and i love the blues brothers but yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> um excellent shaylin how you doing there thumbs up beautiful okay so um that's worship uh the other things that I sent to you, the little in your email, if you didn't watch them yet, that's fine. Try and do that before next week. There's a little talk on giving. There's a little talk on your spiritual gifts. I'll, I, if you don't have any other questions, I'll use up the, my last uh, five minutes here on something of those. But nonetheless, um, spiritual gifts, giving, and then prayer. So I've got a little, some just helpful suggestions and a little bit of short talk on, because that's a part of the Christian life. And then next week, we'll talk about ethics and living and individual ethics versus the church's ethics and a lot of issues. Um, it's not my favorite class. No, I'm just kidding. It is actually, it's really important. I'm not going to do a big lecture. I'm just going to open up some stuff about Christ and culture and the church and what is the church's role when it comes to social issues. And, and you know, we won't solve any problems, but we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. So that's next week. But Or other questions that you might have. Um, please, Linda. Yeah, I just thought you're, uh, I, I watched them this afternoon. Yeah. And I thought they were great. You know, spiritual gifts, prayer, uh, giving. They're, they're very short. Yes. Are they really eight years old? They are eight years old. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Good. They're really yeah. good. I took a bunch of notes. Those ones are. Yeah. Okay. Well, and one thing I led to another, and I one and another and another. So I got my Bible out and I'm just kind of cool. looking at things. But then, off topic, I went to a funeral about well, a week and a half, two weeks ago, and of course they have the uh, Psalm 23. Yeah. Later into the service, they had a short reading on Psalm 127 mm. about building a home. And I started reading more about that and about maybe they were referring to how this gentleman was a good father and he was a mm. baseball coach and whatnot. And they were just so is there a class just about Psalm? I have done a class. I did my Thursday Bible study. We didn't cover everyone, but we just took a bunch of Psalms. Did it's you know on it's psalmist. Just a psalmist. Did? Yes. Okay. So, well, a psalmist in the liturgy is someone that sings the psalms. 
So, so the, the Psalms are this, think about the Psalms as the prayer book of the Old Testament. That's what they are in essence. They're mostly attributed to David, but there's a lot of people that are not. Well, I just, you know, that's part. Of, oh, Becky, look at you. Thank you. Becky's the first the psalm was sung by the pastor in his yes. church. So the psalms were in book. Yes, the psalms, even in the Hebrew Bible, have little markings. Like once I, they accidentally got put up on the screen and people said Selah or something. Selah. Yeah, that's like, no, that shouldn't have been up. That is a musical directive. We don't know exactly what it meant, but they we know that the psalms um Linda, were sung in the temple and in synagogue. They weren't just spoken. So a lot of people say we should sing, and they're psalm tones, and we used to do that. So nice. No, yeah. There is um, like a podcast I started listening to on Spotify, and it's number one, uh, number 832, Psalms 92. Okay. That's a good one to yeah. listen to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's not, but I'm going to write that one down, too. Oh, yeah. I think I mentioned this. This is from 1517. Yes, that's right. And it has a daily song that is read by a pastor. Then it has Chad Bird, who does the commentary. He's Old Testament. And oh, I can remember that. You and told me. has an original song that goes with it. We have started listening every day. Every morning. Every morning, because oh. it's incredible. So it's called Hidden Streams. So 1517. Yeah. Now this is a podcast. This is a podcast. It's a podcast on Spotify, but you can go to their website. Yeah. So whether you have an iPhone, if you have the iPhone, you just go to your app, go to your podcast, or if you have an Android, Android, that's fine. Spotify. Spotify. Yeah. It's called Hidden Stream. Hidden Stream. 1517 Network. So write 1517 and um, Hidden Streams. Chad Bird is a old te- pastor and a great Old Testament scholar. Um, and uh, so if you want some more on the Psalms, Linda, that's. It's not 1517, I don't know. It is, there's a, there's a. It's the 15th. 1517 is a group, it's a podcasting and, inter- and website resource. They're, and they're not, what I like about them is they're some of the, the less. Missouri folks and the North American Lutheran folks and, and ELCA folks, some of them are so Orthodox. So they, they cross some of the Lutheran and they're just really good. Really. There's, uh, yeah, I could, uh, next week I could give you all my favorite podcasts. But, but 50, that is that is a great one. Thank you for mentioning that. So 15, 17. In streams, Chad Bird, find find that on your podcast staff. You're going to do it with Sanders. I forgot. Okay, Nellie, yes. And Nellie's got hers too. So. Well, it's up here. Okay. Stop it. You see, you got to start it on the Psalms, Linda. Thank you for that. That's a beautiful thing. That's a great way to pray. Um, so we're just about done. Um, other questions? Finish us off. I'm not going to jump into any particular stream at this point. Yeah, Are good. Mitch? Yes, acts of God, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. So if you're not sure, how do I pray? What do I say? What do I do? You think about the acts of God as an acronym. Well, you praise God, give God praise. You confess your sins. You give God thanks for all kinds of things. And then supplication is a fancy word for what What do we need? You know, asking. and yeah, asking. Yeah, yeah. So good. Good job. That's great. I'm glad those are helpful. I don't want to short change the Christian life, <laughs> but you, you can see my passion is with some of these things. But if we were to do all of that, we would have to go like 10 or 11 12 sessions. But anyway, you know, I want to stick with this, this general uh, aim here. So other questions, other thoughts tonight? I think if people, those that go to the entertainment 
Yeah. Here I'm eating my peanuts over here while yeah. I'm doing it. But that's all right. Um, if they knew more about what was going on with this, it's it's more exciting. You know, it's kind of like watching Top Gun and you go, oh, he's doing this because, you know, they knew more of what what each of these was all about. That's pretty cool. That's what this means. Yeah. You know? Because otherwise, I've gotten from people who do go to those churches of, well, it's the same thing every week. You do the same thing every week. <laughs> you know, it's like going to see the same movie every yeah, week. Right, right. You know? And you see right I mean, all day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, and well, the sermon's different. Sermon's but different. The readings are different. The, the songs are different. Are different. Songs are different. We do sing yeah. different, but the process is the same. And that is what people, there is this bias that a prayer that's written out is less of a prayer than one that's spontaneously said. Okay, and this is the Pentecostal movement. This is that if it's because the assumption, if it's read, it's not from the heart. But I can tell you this that I'm not sure I've prayed a prayer until I've prayed it at least a dozen times. If you have a real prayer that's in depth, like the Lord's Prayer, you know, <laughs> and then you study it. So just because it's written doesn't mean it's less of a prayer. But for a lot of folks that they're that it's, you know, gracious God, you know, and that's real prayer because like somehow the Holy Spirit's involved. I think that's great prayer. And I think it's powerful to pray spontaneously. Um, I can still remember the first time I did it and it's so powerful, but that written prayer is Mm -hmm. Just as much of a prayer. Well, there's a reason it's written. Right, right. It and it's well it's thought out. out. Yeah. And it's well thought out. And it's, yeah. So, so again, it's really a matter of there's there's pluses and minuses, strengths and weaknesses to the way everybody does things. But I agree with you, Becky. I think if people understood some of the process and the reason, they would at least be more kind to it. You know, it, it was like that oh, yeah. analogy I used with baptism with my brother's fa wife's family. Right. You know, it's like, I'm not trying to convert you. I just want you to understand why. Because to to the Baptist doing an infant baptism, just like. Yeah. You should have seen the comments that were flying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, Oof. Did, yeah. that just got people so angry. That our whole thing on baptism. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? In your class. In a, yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was really fun, though, to be able to, to watch speak. that. I would just go back and say, oh, and just kind of get them to kind of yeah. see something different. Yeah. And read, it was really... have you read, go back and read more baptisms yeah, exactly. talked about in the New Testament. <laughs> well, you know, in, in many churches, well, our experience has been primarily non-denominational for a while. But uh, if they say that we do things the same every Sunday, I'm thinking... You do too. That's true. And mm -hmm. and guess what? You don't even pray as much. Yes, you right. pray before the pastor's sermon, maybe, and and then and, that's it. And and that's maybe it. One one closing so prayer, and, and you may do communion once a month. Yeah. And so there's nothing that draws you back into who you are because of Christ. Yeah. But they don't want to get that deep. Yeah. Well. You know, I, that, that's where I, did. I know you said it, and I'm glad you said it, not me. Because <laughs> I, I, I think I don't think kid, I can say I know. They, they yeah. know so many people that were in those situations, and they they do see it differently. But I'm not disagreeing with you. Yeah, I, no, I it's, I've it's, had a lot of people go there and don't call not to put Paul and Valerie on the spot here, but that's a part of their journey that you know we, we're looking that we that discovered. Why, this was why we came right, here. and right. Yeah, is, it's been yeah. like taking a bath and washing you just washing your feet. Yeah, yeah. like the shallow yeah. end or the just, deep end. Okay, but but if you don't do this kind of work, you can still do this kind of worship service. And yeah. still be in the shallow end because yeah. you're not putting your heart and mind into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Good. Great class tonight. Thank you. Um, so, leave me okay. not your, leave me your scoring sheet. Yeah. Oh. If you can. And then those of you who didn't do it, you can do it and bring it back next week.
Yes. Correct. You take home your names. Yes, please put your names on them. And let me tell you as you leave, let me close this in prayer and then we'll go. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, send us forth. Be with us in this week. Um, uh, let us let your face shine upon us as we go forth and be with us until we meet again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, put your names on this. I'll tell you use them next week. Don't worry. This is not setting you up. You didn't commit to anything. So you're not. Uh, the benediction that we heard of Guam every. Okay, hold on, everybody. For three years. Hold on. Hold on one second. Three. Julie's going to send us forth with the benediction. Okay. As you go on your way, may the Lord God go before you to show you the way, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over you, behind you to encourage you, and within you to give you peace. Every Sunday for three years, we heard that. And my sons can say it. You need to email me that. Yeah. Because I don't even use it. You can even sing it. There's, it, there's it's like the Irish yeah. thing. Yeah, the, yeah, that's right. May the Lord rise. Yeah. Yeah. God bless you. Next week. Next week. So the 11th. Happy birthday to you. And safe travels. Tell your guy hello. I will. He tried to kill me the other day. I didn't mean to. So sure that we could handle this yellow jacket thing by ourselves. Because I did it by myself in the spring, not knowing that they need the snakes. And they chased us into the house. They were in the house. Great God did about 70. Thank you all the time. Thank you, God. 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 So you have a good winter in the desert and be back. We'll see you at Christmas. Beautiful. Bye, kids. I'm so glad you come. No, but next week is one of the, what you're going to talk about next week is one of the things that made me realize I was in my place. The way we come out. Yeah. Cool. Cool, cool.